Hi guys, Stefan here from Tech Testers, and today we're not going to be doing anything too extensive or look at something crazy expensive like the last few times, but we recently tested ASRock's very first graphics card to the market. And in this video, we're going to take a look at what you can expect from this RX 580 Phantom Gaming. Now, right from the start, it's clear that ASRock does not have any high-end aspirations going on here. I mean, it's definitely a nice looking card, but you can see it's not a super thick or a super long card. There's no backplate, there's no RGB feature. They are really going for a basic feature set here. And we don't think there's anything wrong with that. Keeping it fairly compact, that means you can put it in most cases. But at the same time, this is not a design that's instantly gonna catch your eye. Again, it's perfectly reasonable. And if you're trying to keep costs down, it's great with the black shroud, only a little white detail. It's easy to mix and match with the majority of other components on the market, which is especially if it's important if you're trying to keep costs down. But again, not something we can simply get super crazy excited about. Now, as far as connections goes, it's the same story as before. You need a single 8-pin power connector to power the card. You have three DisplayPort connections and a single HDMI and a DVI port out. So that should be plenty for most use cases. So we did what we always do. We fired up our test bench containing an i7 and a bunch of memory to make sure that it's just the graphics cards that bottlenecking the performance. And we ran it through the same benchmarks like we always do until our eyes bled because benchmarks at some point get really, really boring. That aside, it did quite okay. Actually, um, levels out at about 1343 megahertz, which is definitely not the fastest RX 580 out there, but it's only a percent or two behind the fastest RX 580s we had, being the ROG Strix from Asus version and the Gaming X Plus from MSI. This means that in the average benchmark, this card is trailing by one to 2% on those faster, more expensive options. And that is simply not something you're ever gonna notice while gaming. Now, when it comes to thermals and noise, it actually becomes clear that this is in fact a more budget oriented card. It comes in at 74 degrees Celsius after a long burn in, and it's at that point doing 43 decibels at 50 centimeters, which means it's not extremely loud, but it's definitely audible while we've seen other RX 580s being whisper quiet. And even though 74 degrees in absolute terms, it's fine. I mean, it's not something you have to worry about. In relative terms, compared to the MSI Gaming X Plus and the ROG Strix versions, the gap is actually fairly huge. Now, that doesn't sound particularly amazing, and you might be concerned if you should be even looking at this graphics card at all. Yet, when we start looking at the price, things change around a bit. Now, it is gonna differ per region, but here in the Netherlands, this is actually the cheapest RX 580 card you can buy with eight gigs of memory, even competing with four gigabyte cards generally. So that is not a very bad deal if you consider the main thing you're sacrificing is noise while gaming. Considering the fans do stop when they're in idle, when you're just using your system for some browsing or some light tasks, your computer is still gonna be whisper quiet. Now the main other thing to keep in mind when buying a graphics card at this time of year, of course Nvidia has just launched their new models and even though we don't exactly know what they're gonna cost and how they're gonna perform, we know that there's not gonna be a direct competitor here, there for the RX 580, because the, two, the 2070 that's coming out is gonna be at least twice as expensive. However, that launch is interesting because it might push the prices down at the GTX 1066 gigabyte edition, and those cards are a direct competitor to this. Now, sorry if I don't sound the most excited today, which it just is what it is. This is simply not the most exciting card. We're used to seeing high-end cards. We're waiting for the newest chipsets to come out. This is not it. The reality, however, is that exciting means money, and this card is trying to be cheap. So if you're looking for value, this becomes a heck of a lot more interesting. Again, the main thing you'll be considering is the fact that it's fairly noisy under load. But aside from that, it is a very solid performer at a very reasonable price point. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, like if you liked it, subscribe to see more, let us know in the comments what you think of this card, and we hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.